this video. We'll add our ordered items to our order page in the back-end Django admin area for our e-commerce app with Django and Python. Hey guys, John Lilder here from Codemy.com, and in the last video, we created our ordered items. So when a customer checks out on our website, an order is generated, and then everything they purchase becomes a separate ordered item in the database. Now, those two things are only connected by a foreign key. They're not actually connected in the Django back-end admin area. So when we click on an order in the admin area, it just has their name and their shipping address and the amount that they paid. It doesn't have the actual things listed that they purchased. And that's kind of a problem because we need to know what they purchased. Now, those things are associated with a foreign key, but we need to kind of put it all together. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So we also probably want to create a new field called shipped that we can click a button to say, yes, this has been shipped or no, it hasn't. So we can keep track of that. We also probably want to put the date in there just for good measure so we could see you know, what has come in and when. So while we're at it, we'll also empty the shopping cart. We haven't done that yet. So after an order is processed, we need to clear out the shopping cart so that there's nothing in there because the order has been processed. So we'll do that in this video as well. It should just take a minute or so, and it should be pretty easy. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships on my courses, videos, and books for one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so before we get into the admin stuff, let's clear the shopping cart whenever we check out. So I'm going to go over to my payments slash views up high, and let's come down here to our process order. And if we look through here, seeing if they're logged in, uh, here's the stuff we did in the last video, and then we create our order item. So here, let's see, after we've created and saved our order item, let's bop over, and we want to go one tab over from this key value for loop here, and let's delete our cart. So remember, if you head back over to the website, we've got our cart up here. It says three. It has three items in it. Even after we check out, those are still listed there. We need to delete that. So. What we could do is just loop through our session and just delete the session key that is saving this information, right? That will delete the thing. So let's go for key in. And now our session is a list of different things. And we don't really care what all is in there. We're just going to delete our session key. So uh, it's a list. So we could say for the list of our request dot session dot keys. And that's one of the things that's in there. And if we go back to our cart way back when and look at our cart.py, when we're creating our cart here, we get the session, we call it the session key. So we could just delete this session key from our cart and that'll get rid of it all. So uh, that's what we're gonna do here. So we want the keys there. So this is a for loop. Here we need to make sure the key is the correct key that's our session key. So let's go if key equals our session key right out of the cart. Then what do we want to do? Delete the key. And we can just call the delete function and just go request dot session and then just pass in whatever that key is. So that should do the trick. So I'm going to copy this. And this is for if we're logged in, we want to do that. If we're not logged in, then that's right here. We'll bop that in there and that should be good. So, okay, we'll test that in just a minute, but that should work and uh, that's good to go. Well, let's, let's test it now. <laughs> All right. So let's come over here. We've got three items. We go to checkout 6093. Our shipping info is there. We click billing. Uh, we just put in some junk for the billing information. Pay now order placed. Uh, let me open up the admin area because we're going to be working in this anyway. And if we see our orders, here's order number seven. That looks good. 6093. Um, what about here? We see sure enough, our shopping cart is set to zero. So if we click on this, there's nothing in our cart. And that seems to have worked. And if we come back over here and look at our order items, we have now have all of the things that were in that thing associated with order seven and order seven. There were three things and order seven. So if we click on your order seven, this is what we really want to talk about in this video. Those items aren't listed here and we want to have them listed here because if we just click on order seven, 
this doesn't help us any. Okay, John Elder has an order. What did he order? We don't know. We know we paid 6093. We haven't done the payment thing yet. We'll get to that pretty soon. But we want to list the ordered items here. How do we do that? Well, it's actually not that hard. And we can come over to our, let's see, payment section in admin.py. The admin.py file is the file that deals with all the Django admin stuff. And you can see we've registered our shipping address or order in our order item. And that translates right here to our shipping address or orders in our order items, right? These three things. That's how we, we put those things on this page. So now what we want to do is we want to take our ordered items and put them in our order. And we can do that with an inline. And an inline does just what it sounds like. It puts something from another model in line with the rest of this stuff on this page, right? So fairly simple. So we come over to our admin.py. Now we probably need our user, maybe not, but maybe. So let's just import it anyway. So let's go from Django.contrib.auth.models. We want to import our user. And the reason why I say that is, well, we probably, because we're already, we already have our user in our order. So we probably don't need that, but I don't know. I'll put it in there anyway. So now let's come down here and let's create an order item inline. And to do that, we just define a new class and I'm going to call this order item inline. And this inherits admin.stacked inline. Now, this is a capital S. This is a capital I. This is a lowercase L. I know it looks like a capital L. Um, Sublime just does that. This is a capital L. See, it's very angular. This is a lowercase l. It's kind of swoopy. It's like a backwards J. So just keep that in mind. That's a lowercase l. That trips up a lot of people. So here we need to define what model we want to add, right? So let's go model equal. And this is just going to be our order item model. This guy right here that we inherited. So, okay, that works. Now we need to extend our order model. So, you know, put this in our order model, which we've imported right there. So we do that by creating a new class and we call this order admin. And this is going to inherit admin dot model admin. And again, this is a lowercase l. I have to say that every time uh, that's a lowercase l. And here we need to tell it which model. Obviously, this is going to be our order model. And here we can define our inlines and we can set that equal to this guy we just created. Now we can declare which fields we want to show up. Uh, you know, do we want the user? Do we want the full name, email, ship? Do we want all these things? Yeah, we probably do. Uh, but if we leave it blank, we don't have to do you know, anything. So we're going to leave it for now. We will change that in just a second. So, okay, we've got this. Now, if we save this and head back over here, I don't think this is going to work. If I just hit reload, nothing has changed because we're still going on the old stuff here. So we need to unregister our order and then re-register it again. It's just kind of a, a quirky thing you have to do. So let's unregister our order model, right? So this admin.site.unregister, and we want to pass in our order. So up here, we're registering. Here, we're unregistering, right? So now that it's unregistered, we need to re-register our order and capitalize this order and order items. So here, let's go admin.site.register and we want to register our order. We also want our order admin, which is this guy, right? Which now holds these guys. So maybe I should put order admin here. Okay. So now if we save this and head back over here and hit reload, we're almost there. We could see here is from this last order, remember there were seven or there were three things. We have one, two, three, but we also have four, five, and six, these blank things. What in the heck is going on here? Well, this is Django trying to be helpful, I think. You know, it's like, hey, there's three orders, or there's three items in this order, but you want to add some more? Here's some fields, right? That's no good. Now we can sort of delete them like that, but that's dumb, right? So what we need to do is get rid of these, and we can do that. So let's come back over here. And when we define our order inline items, we can say how many extra we want. So let's go extra equals zero. Now this probably will do the trick. Let's give it a try, hit reload. 
And now we just have those three things. So uh, order item five, six, and seven, because those are listed here as five, six, and seven, right? That makes sense. And then it has all of the things. Very cool, very easy. Now, you may or may not be wanting to use this admin area, you know, and we should probably build out a admin dashboard on the website that shows what orders have come in, what's what have gone out, what are pending, all that good stuff. And we'll probably do that. We'll definitely do that. But it's nice to have it right here in the admin area too, just in case you just want to do it right here. And here we can delete any of these things. We can edit any of these things. And we can do all the cool things. So very cool. Now, we also, what else do we want here? We also want to change our order model to add a little shipped field. So we've generated this order. It's got items in it, but have we shipped it yet? I don't know. Who knows? There's no way to tell. So we need to add that. And I also kind of want to add the date that this order was generated. If you come back over here, remember our model, our order model, it has this date ordered, but it's not showing up in the admin area here. Why not? Well, because that is set in stone. You can't change that. You can modify all these other things. Like if, if I wanted to change John Elder to Don, John Elder Tim, I don't know why you would want to, but I could do that. I can edit these. You can't edit a date time that's been auto set. So since you can't edit it, the admin area is just not even showing it. So first, let's add that. I want to make sure that shows up. So how do we do that? Well, let's come back over to our admin.py file. And let's see, in our order admin, we can say, hey, show the read only fields. That's what it is. It's a read only field. You can't update it. So let's go read only underscore fields and let's designate we want our date underscore ordered, which is from our models.py file, this guy right here. It's a models.date field. It's auto generated anytime an order is created. All right. So if we save this, head back over here, that may do it. It may not. Let's see. Yep. Sure enough, there it is. Uh, very cool. So while we're at it, thinking of this, this time is not correct, but it's the server time, which is set to something different. So good enough for now. Uh, while we're at it, let's very quickly, we have this read only fields. Let's also do a regular fields. And here we can pass in, we want the user. Uh, we want probably the uh, full underscore name. And let's just have that. So if we save that, come back over here and hit reload. Now we just have the user and the full name. So you probably want all of them, right? But if you wanted to tinker and only have certain things, that's how you would do it. So we can just fill this out. We might as well. So let's also have the email address. Let's also have our shipping underscore address. Let's also have the amount that was paid. Let's also have the date that was ordered. And that's all for now. So now save this, come back. All that stuff is back again. So, okay, very cool. Now, one last thing we want to do while we're at it is add a new field here that says shipped or not, right? So we want to keep track of whether the thing has been shipped or not. So we can make that change. Uh, let's head over to our models.py file for our orders. And let's just modify this thing. So here we have the user full name, email, shipping address, amount paid, and date ordered. Let's also add a. I don't know, what should we call this? Shipped, right? Has it shipped or not? Yes or no? And this really just needs to be a Boolean field, true or false. True, it's shipped. False, it hasn't shipped. And we can set the default as false because right out of the bat, they haven't shipped. As soon as the order is generated, it is automatically shipped. We have to ship it, right? So uh, we can just call models dot Boolean field. You'll notice we have car field, email field, text field, decimal field, date, time field. Now we have a Boolean field and Boolean is just true or false. And we can set the default if we want to false. Okay. So there we go. If we go ahead and save this, now this is a major change to our model. We need to make a new migration and push that into the database. So let's head back over to our terminal, control C to break out of here. I'm in my C slash ecom slash ecom directory. My virtual environment is turned on. Let's go Python manage.py make migration. And this is only one migration, but it's always plural. So might make migrations. There we go. It's saying, hey, we added a field shipped. It knows what's going on. Super duper. Let's go Python manage.py super duper <laughs> migrate. Uh, all right. It's pushed that in and we're good to go. So let's go Python manage.py run server. 
There we go. That seems to be working. We head back over here, hit reload, and nothing has happened. Why? Well, because remember, we just changed this to list all the things specifically. So now we have to specifically put in shift. All right, so save that. And if you didn't see, that's just in our min.py in our order min section where we have our fields just because we explicitly put them all there. We need to slap a shift at the end. So, okay, that should do the trick. Head back over here, hit reload, boom. Now we have this little button that says shift. Very cool. And if we wanna click this and then come down here and save it, and we go to order six, it has not been shipped. Oops, there we go. If we go back to orders and click back on our order seven, it has been shipped. It keeps track of that nicely. Very cool. Now, later on, we probably want to modify this to update a new date, like a shipped date. So anytime we click this and save it, we want Django to automatically add a date that shows when it was shipped. So we can track that. We're not going to do that in this video because this is getting a little bit long. We'll probably do that later when we work on the admin dashboard or our shipping dashboard or order dashboard on the actual website. Uh, but for now, this is coming right along and very cool. So we have in this video emptied out our cart. We've added the order items to our order section here in the Django admin area and we are moving right along. Very cool and a lot of fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 200,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.